Frank Randall themed events. Shortly we'll have free fall drinking. Uh, and what better way is it to be than here on a lovely summer's day? Perhaps the only one will see this July. Um, the blue plaque outside. Reminds us why we're here because this is where Frank was first starring from. And then mysteriously, the theatre was destroyed in a fire, which uh, Brother Culkin has informed me. Uh, a finger of suspicion was pointed towards Frank, who may have nodded off with his woodbine uh, set fire to the North Pier. But it was a case never proven, unlike all the other court cases Frank was involved in. Because as we know, is Bill Matter said, star of Stage Screen and Magistrates Court. So we're here today to celebrate the, the magic that was Frank Randall, the taster of what's about to come for us. Our day began at uh, graveside at Carlton Cemetery, where we did the regular pouring of the Guinness over, over Frank's inter remains. And uh, I like to feel that as we walked away from the grave towards the grave of Norman Evans, there was a very loud burp. Who <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, before our film show, where we're going to present for you today, uh, rather than one uh, full-length Frank Randall film, I'm going to show you three of the shorts that Johnny Blakely called from uh, material from uh, films that Frank had made at Mank Union. Uh, we've got Ramble and all that, Bella's birthday, and Full House, which is from somewhere in politics, which sadly remains missing to this very day. The only Frank Randall film that's still missing, but we've got this 14 or 15 minutes from it. Uh, with Sid and Max Harrison, Alex Playoff, and Tessie O'Shea, and Frank himself. So, without further ado, I think it's time for old Charlie to say a few words with his dummy husband. We took him to the opticians the other day. Took him to the opticians, he needed some new glasses. Did you? Oh dear. He needed new glasses. He said, the optician said, put your hand over your left eye. He couldn't do it, he couldn't find his left eye. He said, do the other eye. He couldn't manage that. The optician gave up. He said, look, stay there, son, I'll go and get something. Came back with a paper bag, cut a hole in it for his eye, put it over his head. He said, can you read that chart now? He started crying. We took the bag off, said, what's up? And he said, I want to metal things. Hello, I'm a bit late this morning. I went to a scouts meeting last night. I don't feel so grand today. Quick, quick, pretty neat. Well, look at all that lot. Fifty years in this job's enough for anybody. There you go. I have to finish these this month. I'm overworked, that's what it is. I wish I was fifty years younger. Fifty years younger? Uh, what's the use of wishing? <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dickie, we'll put my wife's favourite tune on. Aye. We'll put her favourite tune on. <laughs> She's been gone a long time now. Gone a long time. I'll be joining her before long. Worse luck. She was always a blasted nuisance. Oh, that damn game's broke again. Best on the 
the music hall stage, he was a cult above the rest. In the North they idolized him. Some in the South would put him down. But comedy was his game, and the reason he became the uncrowned king of dear old Blackfield Town. and the forties he was all the rage the things he got up to in his private life almost eclipsed what he did on the stage stories of drink and woman I